What's up guys, it's Paul from Non-Apple Fan here and I thought I would talk to you a little bit about Radeon 7. I have one. I am benchmarks to come. I'm gonna try and do all of them today. Get them all out today. Get everything we can get done today. Um, but I thought I would give you a little kind of unboxing experience, a retail version of Radeon 7, which is not impressive in any way, shape or form. You pay 700 quid for a card, you get a shitty box, you get a shitty everything. You're going to see it with me. Uh, I guarantee you there's nothing in this box. I haven't looked in it yet, but there's nothing in it. I, I have this guy here because this is previously the most expensive AMD card I have ever bought. Uh, HD 48, 4870X2, my old baby. <laughs> like This is actually bent and stuff. Like That's how old this card is. I just keep it as kind of a memento. It's a dual GPU card. The value we used to get back in the days, people. The value we used to get that we don't get anymore it's ridiculous like this was too uh t t like top end graphics card car graphics cards from amd uh for like i think they cost 350 euro i don't know what they cost in dollars um i'm gonna close this down because you can see me recording hold on for a second just give me a second and i'll put this over here so you can't see that okay all right so I think they cost 350 euro. I don't know what the what it was in dollars at the time. I wasn't aware of the dollar prices at the time. So 350 euro for two 40, 4870s. And I bought them and I bought it at a retail shop. So probably more like 300, I would imagine. Probably 300 dollars as well. Uh, and, and this was like actually 570 or something. So that was... And at the time, euro was a lot stronger than dollars as well. So like 140, 150. So that's the case with this. I paid a lot of money for this back then. This was like 2007 or 8 or something like that, I think it was. But yeah, I worked my little ass off, saved money, got the fastest card in the world at the time. And that was when dual GPU support was supported and it was amazing. Most games actually ran quite well on it. You then tended to get pretty good scaling. But um, yeah, so that's the cooler I've got for this thing. If you've seen my previous video, I'm going to do... This is one of these old AliExpress uh, motherboards um, with X58 motherboards. So I got had to get a cooler for it because all of the liquid coolers I have apparently don't want to work with uh, LGA1366. So here we go. This is my Radeon 7. It's the Sapphire one i got it for msrp in great britain british pounds which is actually a ripoff because uh i did a i did a video with the good old gamer the other day you should subscribe to him good decent nice chap talks about stuff uh relating to tech and value and and all that kind of stuff uh and he's he some surprising insight on things so you definitely should go but we, we, we we're ta talking about doing a little bit of collaboration so we definitely did do a video yesterday i messed up the audio so I don't know whether that's going to happen. We shall see. But um, yeah, so uh, we were talking about this guy. And to be honest, it's just terrible value. <laughs> uh, in in the US, I think they're still like they're still going for $699. Um, there's a bird. Can you even hear the bird? Shut up, bird! I showed him. Up. I showed him. Uh, yeah, so there's a... So six hundred ninety nine dollars, much of a muchness. You can argue that, but um, this at six hundred and fifty British pounds, it's more like a thousand US dollars. Uh, in euro, I'm okay with paying euro to to dollar prices because that's what we've done all along. We've always done that. So it's even in euro, it's like seven hundred eighty nine uh, dollars. But that's it. That's all that's in the box. Literally, that's it. You get a little. A little piece of paper. You pay seven hundred and eighty eighty nine or seventy nine euro, a thousand dollars for that. There's no tape. There's no tape on the bag. <laughs> There's no tape on the bag. They usually tape this on every graphics card. Remember, they skimped on the tape to save money. <laughs> Basically, like the cheapest cardboard in the world, wrapped in really cheap cardboard. When you get like an NVIDIA card, have you seen like the stock NVIDIA cards that come in these like really beautiful boxes? Um, but it is a very well built card. You can tell all, all already. There it is. There. It's so heavy. Like this, I thought this card was really heavy. 
but um, I think this one's heavier. And this is dual GPU. This one's heavier. This is definitely heavier. Be for cooler. Um, but I thought I would talk just kind of to fill out this because yeah, nobody really likes unboxings. But um, yeah, I thought I would talk about the HBM because I have done a video on HBM, but people keep keep asking me, could they not have done this with eight gigabytes of RAM? Could they not have done this with eight gigabytes of RAM? Could they not have done this with GDDR6? Could they not? Have, you know, people want to hope that you can get a cheaper GPU. This is the the. the, the we're not upset that this card is as fast as it is or isn't as fast as it is. What we're upset about is the fact that it doesn't cost less. That's what we're really upset about. Because the performance is there with this card. It's a massive performance increase. If I Well, I won't know because I haven't done numbers yet. But it's a, I'm going to just put this here. Uh, it's a massive performance increase over um, Vega. It's nearly a normal generational upgrade. Like, it's it, you know, when you look at Vega compared to Fury, it's like... 30 percent ish faster than uh fury and this is 30 percent ish faster than vegas so it's like it's normal amount of percent better but it's just so much more money than than vega 56 uh, vega 64 is like it like 64 is 500 dollars msrp this is 700 dollars msrp and i understand it's seven nanometer but people want cheaper, and that's what they really want. And they're upset because this costs so much. Um, I'm not going to justify the price. Personally, I think that two-year-old performance for the same price is an absolute rip-off, no matter what way you look at it, no matter what way you get it, no matter what way you, you, you can justify it to yourself. And you can make all of the kind of the 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 excuses you want to make for AMD because that's your that's your family, that's your plan. That Remember, I bought one of these, so with my own money, I didn't get sent one for review or anything like that. And my personal opinion is that, no, they couldn't make this any cheaper because it's a dog of an architecture. Vega is a bad gaming card. Polaris is a good gaming architecture, very much like, um, you know, uh, Pascal is a very good gaming architecture. Turing is a very good gaming architecture. The problem is they added a lot of compute level stuff onto the die, the DRT cores, the tensor cores. <coughs> Excuse me. They're for, for kind of machine learning. Well, the tensor cores are for machine learning and stuff like that. And yes, we need them for ray tracing. Yes, we need them for denoising. Yes, we need them for DLSS. But they didn't need to be put there to make a fantastic gaming card. If they'd taken them out, they could have dramatically decreased the price of the architecture and we would have just gotten a massive performance increase. Because that Turing actually does give a performance increase and an IPC gain. So not only are you getting like, you know, clock for clock, there's an IPC game there, which is amazing. And you're getting more shaders as well with like the likes of the, the, the 2080 Ti. So, but with this, what you're getting is less shaders, but higher clock speed. And that's where they get most of their performance from. But the only other place that they get a lot of their performance from is memory bandwidth. So the bandwidth on this is a terabyte of bandwidth, which is like the biggest band memory bus ever, ever on a gaming card ever and it's a gaming card people are going to say but it's a prosumer card it's it's for for look I, I i can justify that because i make youtube videos and i render stuff out and that's that's the reason why i can say oh well i need it because it makes my job 30 percent fat no it, it's it's a gaming card like that's what it is it's designed for gaming amd marketed as a gaming card they said it's a gaming card like the reason why they, they they're doubling down on the, the hpm saying that's good for creators just for reasons but the reason why this has 16 gigabytes of ram is because they couldn't individual stacks of hpm only come in the smallest stacks that amd can buy them in is four gigabytes of hpm in a stack so they put as little amount of memory as they could on this card while giving you the biggest amount of bus they could because they needed to give you that bus to give you the performance they're getting Vega, if you you can make Vega run at sixteen hundred megahertz, and I'm pretty sure Vega run at sixteen hundred megahertz. You can actually make Vega run at eighteen hundred megahertz if you can keep it cool enough. If you can liquid cool that bad boy and re registry mod the power limit, some Vegas will hit eighteen hundred megahertz. A lot of them hit seventeen hundred and fifty megahertz, which is the liquid cool edition's boost clock. And a vague that die there at seventeen hundred and fifty megahertz is no different than the die in here, except for that one has more compute units. So that one running at seventeen hundred and fifty megahertz, if it had a terabyte of bandwidth, if you somehow could magically overclock the memory to two thousand megahertz and give it a, a terabyte of bandwidth, it would be comparable to this. I don't know whether it would beat it or not. Probably be in and around the same. 
but that's how they got the performance increase. I think the greatest performance increase from this core, because I've seen that, I have my, had my card at 1750 megahertz and it doesn't run as fast as this card in games. So it tells me that the memory bandwidth is what's giving it its performance edge. They couldn't do it with this. Four gigabytes, they buy them in the little stacks. They don't buy each individual stack and then put them together themselves. They buy the stacks of HPM themselves and the, the cheapest that they can obviously buy them or the, the slowest amount that they can buy is actually four gigabytes of memory. So they need four to get the full bandwidth. So they need two on this side, two on this side. That gives you, each one is 256 bits, uh, uh, 256 megabytes, which giving you the full terabyte of memory bandwidth. And as I said, that's where they're getting all the performance from. So that's why they did that. They can't do it any other way. If you were to do it with, if you do a GDDR6, absolutely, you would absolutely decrease the price of the card, but it wouldn't give you the bandwidth they need to get the performance increase. And your card would look like an absolute clusterfuck. Because if you know you have to put your memory all the way around the die, and then you have to trace all that out, and then you have to add a memory bus to it. And AMD's and memory buses over history, historically have drawn a significant, uh, significantly larger amount of, um, power than uh, NVIDIA's cards have. Now, I've talked about memory compression and all that stuff, and people say that memory compression causes image quality to look worse on NVIDIA cards. I think that's a lot of horseshit. I think it's something to do with optimizations in the driver. We talking about. I was talking about with the good old gamer yesterday as well. I agree completely agree with what he said. It, it, it is, the Im image quality on this is nothing to do with memory compression. NVIDIA are faster and can do better things with their memory because they've got better memory compression. You can say whatever you want. You can plant your flag and say, no, Paul, you're wrong. Whatever you want to say, the fact of the matter is their memory compression is better. Therefore, they can reduce the size of their memory buses and ramp up the clock speeds of their memory and use 6 gigabytes, uh, GDDR, uh, GDDR6 to, to, to do all that stuff. AMD have to throw HBM at it. They have to, re so to get the memory buses that they need to get the performance that they need. If they, if they didn't if they had if they didn't have to do this they wouldn't do it they have to do it this the whole memory subsystem on this probably draws maybe 30 watts the memory subsystem on on the on the r9 290x for instance drew like because it's a 512 bit bus so to have the that this kind of memory memory bandwidth with this card using gddr6 you probably need a 512 member uh megabit uh bit bus sorry and the R9 290X drew probably 150 watts of power, or 120 watts of power. Just for all the memory chips, the memory bus itself, and all of that, drew just that. Like, the bus itself drew 75 watts. That's a six-pin connector, just by itself. You cannot do this card with HBM, without HBM. You have to do it with HBM, and you cannot do it with two stacks of HBM. You have to do it with six, or with four. Jesus. You have to do it with four, because that's the only way you'll get that performance increase. So that's why this card exists. That's why it's done the way it is. And that's why it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Believe me, if AMD could make this card cheaper, they would do that because nothing would suit them better than hitting a lower price point because they want to sell a lot of these cards. Um, they want to keep, say, relevant. They want people saying good things about them. And they know that if they're not cheaper than NVIDIA, nobody will say good things about them. The fact of the matter is, if I wasn't on an NVIDIA embargo, an NVIDIA, you are a scummy company embargo, I would not buy this card. And I can say that before even doing the review, because the RTX 2080 is the same card and I can get it cheaper. Even if this be beats it by a slight amount, I can still get the RTX 2080 cheaper. I bought this card because it's the only way, while well, staying true to my, my my moral compass, which is that NVIDIA is a shitty company at the moment, doing shitty things, lying to investors, lying to everybody else, telling loads of spoofs, uh, EGPP, trying to control the whole gaming market, and the fact that if nobody buys AMD cards, nobody will buy AMD cards. So I want competition in the market. So I was left in a, in a, in a moral quandary whether to say to myself, well, um, I don't agree with 700, 700 quid mid-tier graphics cards because let's be honest we used to call it a gtx we used to call this card mid-tier that was a gtx 260 that was mid-tier and that was the second tier down and we used to call that mid-tier and that was like fucking 450 or 500 quid like that but that's what we used to call mid-tier um but this is mid-tier now this is this is 700 quid mid-tier the the high end is the is the is the 2080 ti it's the only card that performs like that and that's 1200 quid and that's because these guys aren't anywhere and and you can see how far behind they are because they've gone to seven nanometer and they're only just matching performance per watt uh, even though they've got a smaller die 
Now, I, 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 I haven't done any power, power tests with this, but from everything I've seen, I really don't think there's much in it between the RTX 2080 and this. Some people say that the, the, the 2080 is more power efficient. I don't think so. I think they're about the same. Um, but they're only just matching performance per watt with this card. <laughs> Two years later, because the 1080 Ti existed. And, and that was about as fast as the 2080. So two years, a new die on a new process, seven nanometer, and they have to put 16 gigabytes of HBM just to extract barely enough performance to match a 2080. That shows you where Radeon Technologies Group is now. They cannot make this card any differently than they did now. So stop hoping for it. Stop begging for them to release an eight gigabyte version that's gonna be cheaper. The way this card works is the HBM probably costs half the price of it. The board and all the coolers and everything else probably costs the other half the price of it. And then there's very wafer tin margins. And they have to what they AMD have to do is they have to sell whatever they buy this for, they have to sell it at a profit. They're not they're not making a loss in this card. I don't care what you say, they're not making a loss in this card. They're making this very small profit. They sell they have to sell it then because if they're make let's say for instance this costs seven hundred quid to make. Now they have to sell it to to a, a supplier, okay? Uh, or uh, they have to sell it to Power Color, for instance, or, or, or um, MSI, or, or who's this one? Sapphire. And then Sapphire has to make, has to, you know, then sell it to, to a supplier. And the supplier has to then sell it to a retailer. And, and each le rung along the chain, those guys have to make money because they won't do it otherwise. So uh, that's reason main reason why I'd say AMD are selling it direct themselves is to cut that level out and maximize the amount of profit they can make. That's why you'll see it maintain its its 700. They, they give some bullshit reason like e-tailers e didn't sell it at $700. That's why we're selling it. No, it's to maximize the profit because they can keep it at $700 there. And that's why you'll probably see it at $700 there as long as this card exists. But you won't see it at seven hundred dollars on retailers for very much longer, and that's the problem with this card. Is that at seven hundred dollars, it's a meh card. It's like you know, whichever one you want to go with. If you're if you're somebody who does productivity work and uses OpenCL a lot, go with this card, bang it in your system, and it will game as well as a, a twenty eighty. Uh, if you're somebody who's looking forward to ray tracing and all the benefits of DLSS and all that stuff, which I think is a, a pipe dream, and to be honest, not that impressive, but still, if you're somebody who wants that. Buy it, buy a twenty eighty, um, and but the problem is that it just doesn't get there for me. It and I haven't even done the review, and I'm gonna do the review, and people are gonna think that oh, you're being really unfair because you haven't even slapped in your system yet, and I might be taking all this back, but uh, unless it performs maybe ten percent better than all of the other reviewers are saying, which I don't think it will. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm, I, I'm hemmed in by buying this card but other people aren't. So it, right now at the moment in Ireland, I can get a 600 pound RTX 2080 uh, around that kind of price, 600, 620, 630. That's probably for like the cheapest RTX 2080 you can get pounds now. That's like oh, well over $700, like nearly $800, probably $900. But uh, <coughs> for this, it's, 700 it's 649 uh pounds and it and it, it won't stay at that price that's the problem it's going to hit higher and it's going to then be used as a reason not to buy this card and i've said that before amd needed to get supply right for this card and they haven't and, that, and so now what, what you'll see is all of the other retailers in america you guys you seem to be sheltered from it i don't know what happens but remember there is six and a half billion other people on the planet and we get screwed with higher prices and that's what's going to happen and it it does filter through to the US market as well and I think that will, will happen in the US market as well you've got to start seeing $800 stock Radeon 7s and when you start seeing those reviewers coming back in a month reviewing them again or whatever they're, that, that that's when they're going to start saying well you know at launch at $700 it was kind of a much of a muchness but now it's not worth it and that's my problem with this card it's, it's, it's that at seven hundred dollars, it's a meh, but at eight hundred dollars, it's a definite no. And then at nine hundred dollars, we're, we're you could see it go in 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 uh, outside of but nine hundred euro, let's say, it's an unbelievable no because you can because there's so much stock of RTX twenty eighty out there that they're not they're not being overcharged for. 
um, overcharged for it. They were being overcharged for it at launch because they're 700 fucking euro, but it, they're not being overcharged for it in relation to their MSRP. Anyway, that's for me. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but if you disliked it, tell me why you disliked it because I can't fix it if I don't know what I did wrong. And in the comments, let me know what you think about this card. Um, let me know what you want me want to want to, want to see me do with it. Do you, I'm I'm gonna do. Don't ask for under undervolting. You know me. I'm gonna undervolt it. I'm the first thing I'm gonna do is undervolt it. So there will be undervolting content. There will be. I I won't do a review of this card as stock. I will do a review of this card with the most amount of performance you can get out of it. So I've heard that you can't overclock them. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't even uninstalled my GPU. So I'm going to DDU it now, I'm going to get this out, get this in, and I'm going to start benchmarking straight after this video as soon as it uploads. So that's basically it. Let me know what you want me to see me do, do with it. It's kind of a sad one for me. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, probably best looking AMD card I've ever seen. And I used to think this was the best looking AMD card I've ever seen, but this is a beautiful card. Um, so that's the only positives I can say about it right now. Hopefully... I have a lot more positives to say about it after. So I love this chamfer, kind of this chamfer along the edge and around the rims of the fans. The fans are pretty shitty, to be honest. Uh, I didn't notice until I got it, but the fans are pretty pathetic. They're like tiny. Uh, I wish I had um, another card here just to show you like how bad. These are cheap fans. I don't care. Yeah, they're cheap. They're cheap as fuck. To be honest, it's the fin stack underneath. That's the real heft of this card. Anyway. Talk to you next one. Gonna press this button to stop recording. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye 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 bye.